Sonic invention I want you to see. Oh, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. Hello and welcome to another Friday's Vapors Report. I'm Anthony Ramella, and look who's back. Hi. Hey, <laughs> Megan. <laughs> It's been a little while since Meg has been on the show, so she's going to be a little rough to get started here, but I know you guys miss her, so we want to bring her back on the show. Um, we're kind of you know, having a good time this Friday, doing another Cloudcast uh, like podcast style, so this is going to be a little bit more relaxed than uh, you know, my staunchy news reports. Uh, but we haven't seen Megan in a while. I know she's been uh, going to school and working and stuff, so you know, how's school? What's going on? It's getting pretty intense right now. Is it? Finals week's coming up, so yeah. a little stressed out. So but what are you studying? Okay. What's, what are your classes like? Like what's my schedule? Yeah, or? I mean, what, what's your major? What do you what do you hope to graduate with a degree in and all that good stuff? Uh, my primary focus is supply chain management, but I'm minoring in international business, so I'm doing my minor right now, and then I've got a few more supply chain classes to finish up. Okay, for those of us out there that don't know what supply chain is, it's essentially logistics, like figuring out how to get raw materials from you know A to B with the lowest possible cost. How efficient can you do it and whatnot? So if you were a juice company, it's getting your vegetable glycerin, your propylene glycol, mm. your flavorings and all that stuff from sent to the right place. From the right cost, good quality, good service, yeah, all that awesome. stuff. All right. So how's work been? Um, it's been pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I'm only there like part time, but I mean, it's going. Were you doing some hellacious sales for those part time <laughs> hours you're putting in? So yeah, yeah I do what nice I do. Having Megan at the store, she's so knowledgeable and has such a <laughs> following with uh, regular customers that. Even with the few days that she works every month, we really couldn't do it without it out there. So she's doing a hell of a job. Um, so obviously there's been a lot of new stuff that's come out in the vape world since the last time you were on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, we released a bunch of new flavors in the stores, you know, that whole 25 pink labels, some new Omega flavors. I mean, there's been new salts, all kinds of stuff. What do you like? What have you seen out there pink label wise? I mean, do you have a favorite? My favorite juice? Yeah, like pink label. Oh, I've got a lot of them. Well, let's um, talk about it. The Smarter Love, I'm actually doing that one right now. Love that one. Um, the banana bread pudding, the vanilla pudding, anything desserty, anything sweet. Yeah. Love. Yeah. The fruit ones are really good too, though. I mean, I'm not a big fruit person, but I'd use a few of those. Yeah. 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 I've, I've seen a lot of these things go kind of crazy. We have. Uh, we have a, an, a new shipment coming in here in the next few days, and we really need it because these flavors have been yeah, so we're hurting. crazy. Um, as far as the Omega line goes, what do you think, as far as the flavors that we've currently released, do you like the Purple Rain? Are you a Blue Bling fan? Um, I know you're talking about S'more to Love. Now, that's something we actually released at the Midwest Vapor Expo. We haven't released it in our stores yet, but there is a little secret. If you like S'more to Love and you go to Vapors1.com, you can order it off the website. So. You know, Early access. Yep, exactly. Okay. So if you are one of those people that like to get that cutting edge kind of liquid, go to Vapors1.com, check it out. There are, there are liquids on there we haven't yet released in the stores, but they are available on the website. We have kind of limited Nick's drinks on those. That's why we haven't released them in the stores yet, but uh, they're coming. So if you're mm -hmm. a three, a six, uh, some 12s, uh, we've got liquids. And that's the cool thing about Omega that I like is that even though it's a national brand juice company, they do go up to that 12 nick. And a lot of people that are trying to step down need that 12 to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why there are a lot of these companies out there that just go up to six and it's like you're, you're cutting out mouth to lung people. Yeah, it's real hard to find. Yeah. A lot of companies don't offer that. So a lot of people find great advantage in that. Yeah. Now I'm a big fan of that uh, Miss Audrey's cornbread pudding. It's I so good. It's really, really good. <laughs> Uh, I think actually here in the near future, you're going to see that as a salt too. So That would be incredible. Yeah. Um, so I noticed uh, that, you know, you've got your majesty with you today, yep. which uh, it's got Good a little old. bit of age on it, but it still works great. I mean, you still use it. And I know you can still mm -hmm. pick up these majesties at uh, the vapor stores and on vapors1.com for like 45 bucks and take it from Megan. She's had this thing for like a what, year two, and a half, a year and a half. Yeah. I was thinking like two years. I remember you got it like right around Christmas. Yeah. Time. Yeah. And I'm not gentle on it either. So if that tells you anything about how they uphold. <laughs> Go grab one. Uh, she's got one of the uh, like the limited edition ones that had the resonance yeah. stuff on it. Those are really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones you can get for under forty five do have like the carbon fiber look to them. Multiple colors too. Yeah, yeah. but it's still the same inside. So yeah, it's, you know, same internals. That. Now uh, I remember not too long ago you were still on your TFV eight tank, and <laughs> now you're on the Falcon tank. You're on that Falcon train. Yeah. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I didn't want to give it up. I'm I'm a didn't. very if it's not broke don't fix it kind of gal. So I mean. It was working, and then you made that one comment one time about my tank being like eight years old. Like, oh, no wonder it's giving you problems. And it wasn't even major problems. It was just a little leakage here and there. And I'm like, you know what? Screw this guy. So I went and got a new one. So. How long are your coils lasting compared to your This TFV one? 
Yeah. I've been using the plus coils in this one uh, in my Falcon tank, so I mean, at least like three weeks. Three weeks. Three good weeks, too, yeah. not like, you How know. How long were your TFV8 coils last? Mm -hmm. Yeah, out. exactly. And they were so expensive so too. Me, it was the right move to make. Yeah. Uh, and plus, the coil cost is so much lower on the Falcon too. Mm -hmm. So you get longer life, and they cost less to buy. So you're saving money all the way around, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so you know, a lot of things going on now. I also noticed you had a pod system with you today. What pod systems are you liking? What are you using? Right now, I'm using the Nord. I've got like 70 of these. Like, they're so great. I've got one in every color. Do you really? Much. Yeah, but I keep losing them too. So. <laughs> See, you're not the kind of person that normally buys like a bunch of mod stuff. That's surprising for me to hear. I'm not, but I, I lose pod systems like it's my job. Like, I've lost like three of them in the past month, and I don't know why. Because I love these things. I use them probably more than my other mod because these are my like my at school devices because they're so small and it doesn't make as much vape so I can yeah. hide it better. But I end up leaving them in like classes and stuff like yeah. that. So I have to keep rebuying them. But yeah, this is my favorite hands down mesh coil all the way. Yeah. And uh, I know that they're actually going to start using that coil in other devices too because uh, people really enjoy the hit. Yeah. One of the things I really like about that too is the battery in it. I mean, that's like what, a thousand mall, 1100 mall? 1100. 1100 mall battery in a pod system. Uh huh. And the other thing I'd like is, and I'm sure you probably do too, if you drop that thing, you're not really too concerned. It's that's such a heavy duty mm -hmm. little device. Um, yeah, I, I think that is it doesn't really point. get scratched either, shockingly, even yeah. if you, even if you rough it around, like it's pretty solid. You know, and smoke. They don't always come out with the best stuff. I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, you know, I, I really, I like go every third smoke product and think, okay, they probably did okay on this. I mean, I don't know if those of you out there remember like the GX350. Um, that had some definite concerns to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's definitely been a few. Now, it's funny. They brought out the Nord and the Nova. It felt like at the same time. And I didn't really know why they would do that. I they, think that they so came similar. out with the Novo first. Yeah. And then the Nord was shortly after. But I think that they, because Smoke has never been shy about like listening to customers' criticisms and like what they can improve on and what people's complaints are on their products. So okay. I think they came out with the Novo and everyone was like, it could easily be this. And then they came out with this yeah. right think, after. For some reason, I think people like a button. Like they the work draw. so much better. I mean, yeah. it's and it just makes sense from like an electronic standpoint, regardless of if you understand why it works better or not. Right. Like you, you know, like yeah. it's gonna work better for you. But there are also a ton of people that come in like, oh, I don't want anything with a button, and I sell them the Novo. Like, all right, you'll see why you do want a button, but we'll try this out. Yeah, Everyone yeah. I mean, it. I don't remember all of them, and I'll probably miss one here. But so we've got the Novo, the Nord, <laughs> the Soren, the Artery Pal Two, the Breeze. The Panda. we just got in that new Nautilus a, uh, AIO, AIO. Yeah. which is very, very similar in looks to the Breeze 2, but a much higher quality device. Uh, I think they fixed a lot of the issues with that. I'm hoping the clips will hold up. Yeah. That's the biggest concern of those uh, clips for clipping that pot in. I think it's more aesthetically pleasing than the Breeze 2 as well. I agree. I yeah. agree. I think it, and I held one yesterday. I hadn't had a chance to until yesterday, but it just feels better in my hand. Yeah. Like the Breeze 2 just felt cheap all the way around. Mm -hmm. and I'm glad to see Aspire saying, okay, let's take this up a notch and see if we can't use something. And the cool thing is, is because it uses Nautilus coils, those gotta be available everywhere. Oh yeah, you know, and they're so relatively nice inexpensive. Thing, you go. You've got much more options for that than you do pretty much any other coil system. Yeah. That and I like the actual colors on it. Like it's not just basic primary colors that they came out with. It's actual like appealing to the eye yeah. type shades. Awesome. So uh, what I'll do, uh, have Drew kind of throw up some images of some of these uh, devices. You can get any of these devices that we talk about today on vaporswan.com probably at the lowest price you're gonna see around anyway. Our, our mod prices are like really unbeatable. And it's cool because if you're a first time customer with us, you get 30% off our regular price off your entire order. I mean, that coils, mods, juice. I mean, I've seen people save a hundred bucks. Oh yeah, easy, easy, you know? Easy. I mean, realistically, there's been several times I've gotten somebody everything that they needed and they're out the door for 50 bucks. Like that, mm -hmm. that would not have happened a few years ago, mm -hmm. but I'm glad to see. And that's what we want to do. We want to get you guys to stop smoking and we don't want to make it something outrageously expensive. One of the things I talked about on one of our other programs was this uh, Nicorette NRT inhaler. It's like this oh, nicotine yeah. replacement therapy product. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about cost with that. And uh, what I found out was uh, in the instructions, it says that you should use a minimum of six cartridges every day with a maximum of 12, all right? Mm to buy six cartridges and have them, to get them to your house and actually physically have them, the lowest I could find was like 25 bucks. Wow. A day. Wow. And that's like a minimum. So if you're a heavy smoker and you use you know, eight or nine in a day, then yeah. you gotta buy multiple packs. And we are not trying to kill you guys with the cost of this stuff. We're mm -hmm. trying to get it 
low enough where you can do this every day because we know it's healthier for you. No one's ever died from e-liquid use ever. I mean, if you mm -hmm. find the, somebody that has, please send it to me because I have done exhaustive research <laughs> and I just cannot find anything like that at all. It's easy to find cigarette deaths. There's, you know, 480,000 of those every year, but yeah. you know, I digress. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, Wanted to get in touch with Megan. You know, we hadn't seen her in a little while. She's going to be on the show a little bit more often. We're going to kind of uh, delve into some news and things like that on a pretty regular basis. But I just figured it was time for us to catch up a little bit. I haven't got to see you, so I missed you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, cool. I'm having fun. Oh, and one last thing. We've got to talk about this energy drink you brought in today. Cause <laughs> I see this thing when she brought it in, and it's like the name of it's bang. Like, wow. Like, okay, what is this about? It's essentially like a super energy drink so it doesn't have any calories which is great it doesn't have any sugar so you don't get sugar crashes it's got i think 300 milligrams of caffeine i don't know where on that's it i can find that i think that's about two to three cups of coffee i think okay. it's three cups of coffee right. but i already drink like four shots of espresso a day but it's also i believe it's got taurine and creatine in it so it's like an anti-crash energy drink if yeah you will. i saw on the front of there it says super creatine mm -hmm. you know I, I i don't know what that means exactly but yeah. And they're no calories, and they're pretty tasty for being yeah. full of all that stuff. I mean, no calories helps out a lot. I mean, yeah. I don't know if I can handle that much caffeine. All no, you couldn't. But yeah, it's, Easily. it's not my thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely not my thing. Yeah. All right, Fine. guys. Well, we're going to move on with the show here. Uh, like you know, every week we do the same thing. We've got to release new liquid. So we have actually been talking about this. A lot of the other reviewers uh, have made a point of uh, stopping using the juice terminology. So... Uh, I understand why we don't want to be advertising anything in remotely into the young area. And okay. I think that was one of those things that they decided. So we've decided to change this to the weekly liquid lowdown. So it's time for the weekly liquid lowdown. <laughs> It's time to release that weekly liquid lowdown. So the liquid of the week is Sad Boys Blue Cotton Candy. Uh, we released uh, this uh, line uh, with their pink cotton candy. It's called Happy End is the actual line from Sad Boy that they're doing. It did so well. Uh, pink cotton candy just blew off the shelves. So we're like, we would just be doing ourselves a disservice not to give you guys the opportunity to use the uh, blue version of this as well. So not a lot to talk about this. It's a cotton candy flavor, you know, sweet. Even people that don't like cotton candy like this flavor. Yeah. yeah. Myself and included. That's what Sad Boy is all about. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, I don't like key lime. All right, we'll try this. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Yeah. All right, yeah. It, it yeah. just kind of, it's crazy. But uh, so blue cotton candy this week. Uh, we don't have a bottle because we don't even have it yet. We uh, It's getting released in our stores today, and I didn't even get a bottle yet. So I haven't even had a chance to try it. I'm excited. I am too. <laughs> I, I, I don't have any doubt that it's going to be fantastic. Oh, yeah. So, yeah no no worries. Whatsoever. All right, guys. Well, uh, as you know, every week at the Vapors Report, we do want to give you knowledge you can use. And uh, one of the things that uh, Megan and I have been talking about off camera and, and a lot of people have been talking about is uh, this new bill that's been introduced into the Senate, or the, I'm sorry, not the Senate, the House of Representatives. Um, there are currently three bills right now in the House of Representatives trying to get passed that are all designed around banning flavors, okay? Um, Give me some opinions. What That's do you think? absolutely repulsive. I mean, I know. I, in I'm my just opinion, beside myself upset, I mean, but I don't know what to do. You know, it's just been going on time and time again. I just don't know when they're finally going to give up. Like, just leave us alone. I don't know either. And you know, the worst part about it is, it's either it, one side is they want to ban us, and then the other side is they want money from us. It's mm -hmm. like make up your mind. All right. Yeah, they're pretty much uh, attacking us from every corner they can. Yeah, one of the things in there was that uh, if it does stay legal, that they want a, like a hundred million dollars in usage fees from the the vape community. One of the bills the was a hundred million. Another one was one fifty, wasn't it? That was on a, yeah on a different bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So somebody else wants even more money out of this, but she's willing to uh, to talk with the Trump administration and come to some kind of an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. To what a hundred? Yeah. You know what I mean, it's just it's really kind of getting insane. Yeah, and that's that's overall it like, is. and that's not even th considering like all of the areas where it's already taxed super oh, intensely. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. and, they, and they want the manufacturers and the retailers and stuff to pay this bill. They they're not going to pass this on. But what do you think is going to happen? It has to get passed on to the consumer. I mean, there's you have to be able to stay yeah. in business. You know, I mean, that's that's part of the deal. Yeah. But how can in one hand you go, this stuff is awful. We need to ban it. But until it's banned, we want some of the profits from it as well. And how can they, it's, it's a syntax, I assume, right? I'm sure, yeah, something like that. But how can they consider it a syntax when it's not proven to be unhealthy? 
Well, and what they're standing on, and that's the sad thing about this, because in 2007 they passed the like Tobacco Control Act, which basically gave cigarettes a foothold that can't be taken out. Yeah. But because vape products weren't available at that time, what they're asking for are pre-market testing through the FDA, which, according to my research, no one has submitted an application yet. Wow. Not one juice company, not one manufacturer that's put out that are required to go through this process. There hasn't been one that's actually gone through and tested. That's a concern. So if you guys are out there or if you're a juice company and you have submitted your pre-market uh, application, please let me know because I'd like to know what the process was like. I'd yeah. like to know what it cost you, how long it took. My concern is our deadline is two years away. In August, it'll be two years away. Like, how long do these companies think it's going to take to go through this process? Like, are they all just going to wait till the last minute and think the government's going to bail them out? Because I think right now we can see the government has no desire mm -hmm. to bail us out. They want the other. They, they, they want us out. And, you know, I, I know I'm a conspiracy theorist sometimes about things, but I'm like, how can they constantly go after something where it's never, no one's ever died? There's no, you know, no e-liquid deaths whatsoever. You have all these people dying from cigarettes. I, it feels like population control. Yeah. It's like, let's, let's take out the thing. I mean, people smoke and they've always smoked, mm -hmm. but now we found something that you could smoke, but it doesn't kill you anymore. Well, we can't have that. We need to keep killing off parts of the population because we need to keep some kind of control on that. I, like I said, I know I'm conspiracy uh, that's, theorist. That's it's, a bit of a, a stretch, little out, I think. Like, what, can, can you give me another reason why they would keep cigarettes legal? Just money. Yeah. That's why they're taxing us because, again, like I said, it's not a sin tax because it's not proven to be bad, but they were getting so much in taxes from the tobacco companies right. and they're not getting that from us. That shouldn't be legal. No. And, you know, the funny thing is uh, talking about, like, the pre-market uh, application and things that are approved by the FDA, I wanted to see, like, what nicotine stuff was actually approved by the FDA. So I went on and it's the two drugs, uh, Chantex and the other one, uh, that are the uh, approved drugs for that. And look at the side effects list. Oh man, for those I've talked to drugs. so many people. A lot of people that come in, they tried that kind of stuff. They tried the Chantex yeah. and, of course, like nicotine gum and all that kind of stuff. And you know, they come to us to get the healthy. Yeah, you know what I mean, but it is yeah. a little crazy because I'm like, if you even watch like a Chantex commercial, they get about three seconds to tell you that it's for stopping smoking, <laughs> and then another 27 yeah. seconds to talk about the seizures, the high blood pressure, the sleepwalking, the switch in mood, the suicidal tendencies. I think the most common side effects is strange, unusual, or vivid dreams. And everyone that I've ever talked to that has taken that has had that. And a lot of people, like my friend's mom, for example, she had nightmares every night about like getting murdered and stuff like that. Like There's it was scary be some stuff. Kind of neural toxicity to that. There has to be. It, it blocks your brain from being able to receive nicotine, right? right? Okay. okay, so that, that just is not something your brain's supposed to do. No, it, they're like, trying to find this chemical way around. It, it, you know, it's sad to say, but it, it kind of reminds me of Marinol. It's, it's like, you know, they didn't want to legalize marijuana, so they decided to come up with a synthetic version of it to curb these symptoms in cancer patients when all they really had to do was just use the plant that was already readily available mm -hmm. for this particular situation. So they're trying to find a medical way or a pharmaceutical way to fix these issues. And uh, it just comes out with huge side effects. It's, ama it's amazing. Nature can do it right. You know I mean? Yeah. Vegetable glycerin, mm -hmm. you know, tobacco. Yeah, there's probably some artificial flavorings in there too, but so they're in Kool-Aid, they're in They're everything. in everything. They and really that, that's what always like surprised me was people were so concerned about like the artificial flavorings, but that's in everything you consume already, you know, if not thing, smaller doses. Uh, like freshly squeezed orange juice yeah. actually has orange flavoring in it because it doesn't actually taste right if you have it uh, like stored for any length of time at oh, all, yeah. like even a few weeks, it loses its orangey flavor when you drink it huh. and people wouldn't buy it because it didn't have that. So whenever you see that now, you're going to see there's something on there that's an additive that they put in there. So it has that orange flavor that you're expecting. Is it just citric acid? Uh, no, it's it's some actual kind of flavoring, which is just crazy. To so me. all orange juice is essentially just sunny D? <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, but, you know. Never again. <laughs> You know, that's the problem with more information that I get, the worse I feel about things sometimes. Yeah, just stay like, in the dark. Man, you know, the more information you have, it's like, man, is anything really what I think it is anymore at yeah. all? Um, so, yeah, so there are, uh, you know, they've, they've sent this bill to the floor. Uh, I looked, I couldn't find any dates on when it was going to get voted on. And the crazy thing was, it's so new, it doesn't even have a number yet. So oh. um, there are links. Drew's going to put them down in the description there. Not only can you get links to the article, um, and an, I do have to give a big thank you to one guy. Uh, Jim McDonald at Vaping360 
This guy is always on the cutting edge of news. I trust him when I go and read his news articles. I use a lot of his stuff on the show because I know that he is up to date on that stuff. So Jim, if you're watching, thank you so much for what you do. Um, but yeah, I, I get I get nervous. You know, I really do. I, I start thinking, you know, Me too. am I going to have to find another type of business to get into? You know, mm -hmm. I really like vaping. Uh, when I started into this, this was not something I had planned on doing as a career. You know, this was some this was a stopgap kind of yeah. situation. But I saw how it was helping people. I saw when somebody comes in and you know the look on their face is like thank you like i i'm oh I can't it's incredible thank you enough for getting me off and making my life just so much better mm -hmm. and to see you know the government say well we don't care about that like i i don't i really don't give a crap like that doesn't make money no <laughs> that doesn't benefit me yeah it it, it drives me oh, insane anyway yeah. so uh we'll go on to something else uh so something else that's been in the news lately uh so you know, Scott Gottlieb, uh, you know, talked about the teen vaping epidemic, and that's been everything since that point. I mean, it was like he just dropped a bomb, and then everybody just jumped on board with it. Um, so there have been kind of wild things that are coming up. Tobacco 21, that has been a, a huge hot one, especially yeah. for us in Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, I read last night, uh, Mike DeWine says, I am just waiting for the papers to come on my desk so I can sign them. Like, there is not, Great. he is in no way going to, you know, so you have got to call your representatives. Uh, actually, the funny thing is, one of my uh, employees downstairs uh, here at the Oregon location, they actually wrote a letter to uh, the state representative and they responded with oh, wow. a very nice kind of kind of formish letter but it was specific to what he was talking about and uh and she was like you know we really appreciate it we will bring this to him and anytime that you have any questions here's a phone number that you can contact so they were really great about taking the information so i have to strongly recommend any of you guys out there that are watching this any employees of vapors you've got to at least write an email the more of these things that they get the more they're going to take this seriously because if this raises to 21, I think you're just gonna see a whole lot of 18 to 21 year olds going right back to tobacco. Mm -hmm. Cause it's gonna be easy to bum a smoke, not so easy to bum a bottle of juice or to you know get batteries or those kinds of things when you're that yeah. age. You know, and uh, the other concern I have is why are we doing this? Uh, you know, the 18 law hasn't oh, worked. Yeah. So raising it to 21, is that really gonna make any difference whatsoever? I always wondered about that too. I don't see how that's any more effective because people are gonna do it whether it's illegal or not. And I read in the law or in the, the thing that they're proposing is uh, if 18 to 20 year olds get caught with tobacco products, there's no consequences. They really? may be subject to confiscation or confis however you say Confiscation. It. Yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> just they wanna make it they inconvenient. They were gonna confiscate it. They just said yeah. they might. They just want to make inconvenience, I guess. Well, and, and what they want to do is they want to they want to punish the businesses. Yeah. So on their offenses, they get huge fines. But if you're in that age group and you have it, I'm like, why would you not punish them? Why would you not set an example that if you get caught with this stuff? But no, so it's just this mealy law that's just yeah. designed to really what it's going to do. It's going to make me lose some employees at Vapors. Mm -hmm. It's going to cut into the uh, the business that we do, which means that we won't be able to do some of the things that we'd like to do, or maybe even bring out products that we would normally because can't afford to. We know our business can't is dropped off. Can't effectively. Um, so that's going to be a problem. So last night about midnight, I was uh, looking up news stories and things like that. And unfortunately, uh, where I'm actually from the Cuyahoga Falls area. Um, and I moved to Toledo a few years ago. And uh, Cuyahoga Falls is in Summit County. And Summit County looks like without any kind of vote or anything like that, just implemented Tobacco 21. So now if you're in Summit County and you want to use vape liquid or you want to smoke, you gotta wait till you're 21. I, I, I think it's awful. I, I really do. I think you guys are going in the wrong, wrong direction. Mm -hmm. You can't put people in jail for adult offenses at 15, and you can't send someone off to kill people and fight for their country at 18. Absolutely. And then tell them, well, you can't make a, a decision about this until you're 21. Yeah. That's just insane to me. It, it is, is insane. Come to an agreement. I would be, okay, if it's gonna be 21 for tobacco products, then it's also 21 to be convicted as an adult. It's also 21 before you can enter the military. And one of the things they always keep bringing up is that uh, teenagers still have a developing mind. You know, and I'm not trying to be mean about this, but is that why you want 18 year olds to get into the army so you can brainwash or them Or maybe easier? even start in college, like decide right. what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like you're expected I mean, to do that. How many kids that are seniors are decided, you know, deciding the rest of their future as a mm. senior in high school? Yeah. They could do all of those kinds a of lot. decisions, but they can't decide whether that this is okay for them or not. Yeah. You know, by drinking, you know, four cans of 300% <laughs> yeah. caffeine stuff and, you know, 
all the Coke and all the McDonald's <laughs> food and, you know, every other bad thing is totally cool, you know. Yeah. I remember when I was younger, there was this big thing like uh, with the anti-vaping thing about fast food. Like they said, why are these fast food companies using all these bright colors and pretty things to attract our children to want to be obese? So you don't even know about that. Because yeah, we actually just talked about changed? that in school recently. Did you really? Yeah, okay. um, I think uh, one of, uh, it was a presentation that we had, it was about McDonald's and in America specifically, they don't do this in other McDonald's, like in Japan and stuff like that, but in America they, survey kids like under three years old like they don't even survey adults opinions on like what they should do for marketing and whatnot and then i found out that like the ketchup packet that they came out with that was actually invented by a three-year-old because he said it was too hard to get the ketchup out so they make them squeezy for kids just like that and i guess the color scheme for mcdonald's which is red and yellow like that's appealing to children because right. they like that kind of thing so they literally market towards the youngest of the young well yeah how many other <laughs> restaurants do you go to that have a playland out front like one? Like a big one. You know, <laughs> yeah. this isn't like something you would miss. It's not three toys in a corner. You yeah. Know? It's, it's huge slides and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But anyway, so for marketing to kids, you know, let's look at the big picture. Yeah. If that's, if that's really our concern. Yep. All right. So, uh, you know, so school systems are now doing some uh, pretty substantial disciplinary actions <laughs> yeah. uh, with vaping products. Uh, we just did a couple of minutes on this on one of the other shows. Uh, Hamilton County schools are doing a 10-day uh, suspension. Uh, possible 80 days uh, expulsion and they're allowing their teachers to search anybody at any time for any reason with like handheld metal detectors. Do we know what their policy is on like getting caught with actual tobacco or with alcohol? It's all the same. They're, they're okay. just lumping it all into one. Oh, box. okay. Um, but the funny thing is uh, I watched a uh, NBC5 Ohio actually did a, you know, uh, a news program, did a, did a little spit on that. And uh, they went out there and talked to teachers and the principal, the superintendent, they came out and they told everybody, you know, we're sending letters home, we're doing all these kinds of things. And it's, you know, it's this huge epidemic. We're having all of these big problems uh, with all these kids vaping. And we're gonna have to take the, the doors off the stalls in the bathrooms. We're gonna have to do all of this stuff. And at the end of the episode, the, uh, the, the guy that's actually doing the interview uh, goes, yep, we uh, searched all the Hamilton County school kids, like 2,900 students, and we found one vaping device. So that kid will be, uh, you know, uh, suspended for 10 days. And I'm like, one device is an epidemic? That's a long suspension too, like 10 days. Like you could easily be failing all of your classes at the end of that. Like that's an extreme reaction. And that's the issue with school systems is they always have those big knee jerk reactions. I can't tell you how many ridiculous rules came out during my four years of high school. Like there was one year where we couldn't wear hoodies because someone broke into a teacher's lounge with a hood on. Yeah. So all the students had to buy new wardrobes essentially. It's that knee jerk reaction. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's just it's it's just way too much. That's a really hefty punishment too, just for something minuscule. I got another one for you. Oh yeah. Yep, charter school uh, down. I, I, it's down south somewhere, and I'll have Drew put the link down in the bottom so you guys can see the article. Uh, but uh, they do a five week suspension for anyone caught with a vaping device. Now here's the funny part: in that district, uh, kids that are suspended from one school can actually go to another school and enroll so they can keep up with their studies, but those schools are allowed to reject as well. So this young kid, and when you see the article down there, he's probably 12 years old, maybe 13 years old, something like yeah. that. He took like a hit off of a vape device and somebody saw him, five weeks bench and bam, right there. So now he's not only so far behind in his classes, he's got this stigma on him that he's like a problem child. So that's just gonna follow yeah. him for a while. Um, he got enrolled in another school, and when they saw it on his discipline, they kicked him out again. Oh so think about what that's doing to this kid's psyche. He's yeah. like, man, I made just a, you know a one little quick bad decision. I mean, if he had taken a sip of beer or something like that, would, would it have been anywhere near those kinds of disciplinary actions? But they have this no tolerance, you know, this policy. So they're yeah. like, okay, well that's that's where we are with it. But five a month over a month of suspension for taking I'm the dragon. I'm surprised bait. that's legal because it's illegal not to go to school under yeah. the age of 18. So how can you force someone to stay out of school and inhibit their education based off something so harmless? It's just appalling to me. Yeah, like, and, and you know I have to keep going back to that. No one's ever died from vape liquid. It just yeah. doesn't happen. But uh, and I think that's the thing. I think they all feel like once the government said there was an epidemic, that oh my God, we all need to jump on this and. It, it, I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as they're actually saying. Mm -mm. Not at all. They just want to stomp it out before yeah. it's actually... But that's the problem. And then San Francisco uh, just released one that is... Uh, they want to ban uh, flavored tobacco sales and vape liquor and all that in the entire state. Mm -hmm. 
They also want to uh, ban online sales, so you're not allowed to buy anything online. And even in the article itself, they said that the people in San Francisco know that the online ban is not something that they can enforce. Then why spend the time and do it? If you know it's something you can't enforce, why even take up taxpayer yeah. money and the time to actually do that? There's so many other big issues that need to be taken oh care word. of, and this is what we're talking about. I mean, the homeless number in California oh, yeah. is like 120,000 people every year. It's the highest. And that's <laughs> what we're doing. We're spending our time taking care of, you know, uh, divorced animals and, uh, you know. Oh, I forgot boys. about that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clogging up the court system with that. So, yeah. you know, it, it just, it, it cracks me up. But, uh, you know, we want to keep you guys informed because we know that this is information that you may not get anywhere else. Yeah. You know, you may not really know how bad this really is. And I'm telling you, if any of these laws go through the house, we're all done. This is all over with. I'm going to have to go back to working on cars or, you know, selling used cars or something. I got the jacket for it. So <laughs> I guess I'm already ready to go with yeah. that. But anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, we do want to give you information that you can use. Uh, we do want you to stop smoking or you're going to die. Uh, I'm Anthony Ramella. I'm Megan Pearl. And we're going to see you guys next week. Same vape time, same vape channel. Thank you and good night. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see.